Do not live your life as if God does not exist. Did you hear what I said? Don't live your life as if God does not exist. Don't worry as if God is not there. Don't live as if God does not care. The Lord cares. The Lord cares for you. And he's calling you back to the place where he told you at the beginning, I love you with an unconditional love. Do not doubt his love. Don't doubt his love. For he is able to love you in your state and bring you back to the way. Thank you, Jehovah God, for how faithful you have been. Umekua mwema kwetu tunakuinua. Tukuza jina na mungu mwambia na stahili. Na netaka usimame leo. Na useme kwamba, Yesu ndia tege meo lako wa subuhi ya leo. Katika shida unazo zibitia hivi sasa. Mambo unayo ya bitia hivi sasa. I want you to cast your burdens unto the Lord. Because he cares for you. The Lord cares for you. Cast your cares unto him because he cares for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We resist every power of the devil that has come upon your people, Jehovah God. We come against your demonic spirits that torture people. We command you in the name of Jesus. Leave them now. Leave them now. Leave them now in the name of Jesus. Na tunatangaza damu ya Yesu. We declare the power of the blood of Jesus. All over this place, in every corner of this building, in every person, I declare in the name of Jesus that you have been set free. You have been set free, not by power, neither by mind, but by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We bless you. Put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Please get us and do it forever. Amen. Amen. Get, get that Bible open for me at uh, Genesis chapter 11. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure having you this morning and. Uh, uh, ready to hear the word of God. Turn to your neighbor to ask them, are you ready to hear the word of God? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Um, I bring you the word of God from the book of Genesis chapter 11. Chapter 11 is where we have the story of the Tower of Babel. You know, right from the beginning of the Bible, the account is given there and you have the account of Noah who found grace in the eyes of God. That when God got angry with what he had created because people had turned wicked, there was one man who found grace in the eyes of God and his name is Noah. That is accounted for. And after the flood, now they have come out of the ark. God gave them a command just like he had given at the beginning. Fill the earth, replenish the earth, go to the ends of the earth and, and fill it. That was the command of God. And he also had made a promise that I shall never again destroy the earth with water. And he put a sign in the sky, the sign of the rainbow, indicating that I will never, never again shall this happen. Those were two very huge promises of God. Just like he has promised us other promises today. But when we come to chapter 11, we see that generations after, they forgot the promises of God. They forgot that God had vowed he will never destroy people with water. God had promised and had sent them to go to the end of the earth and replenish it. And this is what the Bible says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from east that they found a plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there and they said to one another go go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly And they, and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go let us build us a city and a tower. And a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name. Let us make a name. Lest we be scattered abroad. 
upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5 says, The Lord came down to see. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. Build. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one. This is the old English. And they have all along long, they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Let us go down. And they are confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from hence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. We have people who had the promise of God. We had we have people who had the commission of God. And this relates very well with what you have been told today. The commission is go to the ends of the earth and preach the good news. Make disciples from every nation. There is the promise also that behold I am with you. I shall not leave you nor forsake you. Now these are people who were supposed to dwell on the commission of God. But now they have come to a place called Shina. It's a place. It's a place where you say, now I have a job. I don't need God. Now I have a good family. I don't need God. Now I am educated. I don't need God. Now I'm connected to the government. I don't need God. Now I have connections with the high office. I don't need anything else. This is a dangerous place for a person to get to. Yet in many, in many instances, we come to that place where we feel like we don't need God. In fact, at the beginning of the month when you have received your salary, you feel you should not even pray. You feel like you are in the plain of Shina. This is where a temptation comes upon every human being. And you say, as they said, let's now build ourselves a city. We shall not obey the promise of God to go beyond here because we have arrived. It's a dangerous place to be. Where you feel I have it. The devil comes and cheats you and tells you, now you are the man. Now you are the girl. When you look at the way people are admiring you, the way your life is put together, that's a dangerous point to be. Let that who, that person who thinks he's standing, watch out lest you fall. They had come now. There are no threats. They are journeying on the face of the earth. And they know the architecture of the time. You can see the choice of the materials they are choosing to make a tower for themselves. They feel they don't need God. There's a person who feels that there's a way I move my life. I don't need God. You are just about to be destroyed. You are just about to be scattered. And I came this morning so that I can call you back to the way. Now these people want to use the same materials that had built the ark because somehow in their mind they are saying we don't believe in the promise of God that he will never destroy the ark again with water maybe another flood is coming so the tower that we are making we are going to use the same materials that were used in making the ark we are going to use asphalt tar, slime and bricks we are not going to use general stones because we know that God can change his mind and a flood might come. These are people who have doubted the promise of God. And now they want to build a tower. And now that they say that it must touch heaven, I tells you, they no longer want anybody now coming to tell them what heaven is saying. They will take themselves there. 
the pride that has come upon these people is big and in, in verse 5 you see God there is a battle there God is watching turn to your neighbor and tell them God is watching what is in your mind turn to the other one and tell them God is watching you because he is on the, he is watching you he knows what you're saying. Bible says, and God said, let God see what they're doing. Remember that even in the Garden of Eden, the Lord went to see what Adam and Eve were doing. So he's coming down, he said, let me see what these people are doing. And he confused their languages. He scattered them. We don't want to wait for that. We don't want to wait for God to chasten us, to chastise us. Because He's a Father. Just like when your children go astray, you'll pick a whip and you will whip them. There are things that God allows so that you can get back to discipline. But you don't have to wait for that. God is calling you back to believe in Him. That the promise He has given is true. Do not live your life as if God does not exist. Did you hear what I said? Don't live your life as if God does not exist. Don't worry as if God is not there. Don't live as if God does not care. The Lord cares. The Lord cares for you. And he's calling you back to the place where he told you at the beginning, I love you with an unconditional love. Do not doubt his love. Don't doubt his love. For he is able to love you in your state and bring you back to the way. I want us to pray and uh, believe God. We are returning. I'm calling you back to the way. I feel this morning I should pray for those who one day you knew very well. You received Jesus as your Savior. But in your ways, you have really gone away. You have ran away from the promise of God. The call this morning is a call of return. And I want to pray for those people who are saying, God, I'm making up my mind today to return to believing that you will never leave me nor forsake me to return to the way that he told you at the beginning. Are you there and you're saying, Pastor, you're talking about me? Raise up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. It's a call to return. It's a call to return. When God came down and said, let me see what they are doing. I tell you in the name of Jesus. You don't want to wait for the scattering. You don't want to wait for that. You don't want to wait for the devil to take advantage. But you want to take advantage of this moment. If you're there and you're the sat head of a person, pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I've gone astray. I've gone after things that you have cautioned me about. I have not trusted you. But today, I determined to return to you. I leave everything that is not of you. And I come to you just as I am. I receive your forgiveness today. I receive your restoration today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. If you are here me for the first time, you want to give your life to Christ. Raise your hand. I pray with you. This is your day to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Are you the one? Don't be left out. Many people have made that decision in this hall. And you too can make it today. And your life will change for good. I'm waiting for that hand. That person who wants to receive the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Don't make it tomorrow. It is now. It is now. Hallelujah. You may be here and you feel you have not trusted God. 
there's something that is bothering you, but you've tried to survive on your way. Remember how God healed you. Remember how God provided for you. Even now, He will do it again. Raise up your hand. I'm going to pray for the needs that you have in the name of Jesus. I want you to put up your hand as a sign. Papa unam to my God must wait for your yes. Raise up your hand as I pray. Concerning the needs that you feel you have survived on your way, but now you are casting it to God. Let me pray for you. We are all closing our eyes and we are praying. Raise up your hands. I want to pray in the name of Jesus. Don't allow anything else to tell you otherwise. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I give you glory, Lord. Raise up your hands unto the Lord. We trust in your name, O oh God. We choose not to trust in anything else, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. It is you, Lord, who got us out. And even now, God, you'll get us out in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that burden that is on you right now. I command it to be removed in the name of Jesus. Be set free from every bondage right now. Be free, be free, be free in the name of Jesus. And I declare now peace upon your life. I declare now deliverance to happen in your mind, to happen in your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down in the name of Jesus. And give God a hand clap of praise. Thank Him for one minute. Continue for one minute. Bless in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. We thank God. We bless the name of Jesus.